Um, excited to see so many people here today. Our topic today is our supper club journey. For anyone who enjoys a good cocktail, a good steak, prime rib, lobster, hash browns, deep fried shrimp, a loaded baked potato, and standing in a bar that is three deep on a Friday night, waiting for your table, this talk is for you. After being inspired by Ron Fayola, who wrote Wisconsin Supper Clubs, uh, Terry and I started our own supper club journey in 2018. And here is Terry to tell you a little bit more about the story. I'm excited to be here today. I'm excited for a couple of different reasons. I love this club because I love a member of this club very much. Uh, also, it's a fun club. Fun club, second second only to another club on the west side of Madison, but that's okay. Uh, the other reason I'm excited to, to be here today is, is to talk about this subject. It's a, it's really, really a fun one. Uh, we were talking at our tale about how many supper clubs are there in Wisconsin. I, I've never counted the number on this slide here, but there's one hell of a lot of them. So first of all, just a, a little bit of background. Uh, when I came to Madison in the late 60s to go to school at the UW, my first job was at Paisons in Portobello. Uh, over the course of the years of my uh, education, I did cook. I did every job possible in those places. I graduated with a degree in Russian. I decided I don't like that anymore. So I quit, quit the Paisons and Portobello, went to 10 bar at the Lake Windsor Country Club, but lived on the west side of Madison. And you know, when you 10 bar, you do things after the bar closes. And River Road got to be pretty scary some of those nights on the way from uh, Lake Windsor to, to so I, I started working at the Hoffman House of Hillville. Uh, and where Target is right now. And uh, one thing led to another. I got into management, managing restaurants, marketing, real estate, and everything. So, so here's the point restaurants are in my blood. I love restaurants. And actually, I was very fortunate to be married to somebody that also loves restaurants. So that's, that's that background. The other background is I'm not sure what year it was, but it was at a Rotary District Conference in uh, Appleton at the Paper Valley. And is that what it was called? Paper Valley something. Mm -hmm. And Ron Payola, who wrote this book, was the speaker at that particular district conference. Uh, and uh, the and he's kind of the living, breathing expert on, on, on supper clubs. So if you think I'm coming across as an expert, this is the guy that wrote the book. He's the expert. I just I'm a customer more than anything else. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, maybe just a little bit about. Uh, oh, and by the way, that's the first of three books he's written. First book was Wisconsin Supper Clubs. Next was Wisconsin Supper Clubs, Another Round. Third was the history of Wisconsin Supper Clubs. And we just heard on Facebook that he's got a fourth one going to his publisher, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So anyway, uh, next question. What is a supper club? <laughs> they serve supper. We're gonna come back to this in a little bit later. Uh, and uh, a little interesting insight there. A family owned and operated, you're never going to find a chain of supper clubs. The, the, the family is usually there that night. You say, can I talk to the manager? You don't have to say, can I talk to the manager? You say, can I talk to the owner? Because there's a good chance that the owner is there. Often, often, come on, not always, uh, there's a, a little bit of a, a, a freebie beforehand. It's a, there's a salad, a salad bar, relish tray, some kind of a little tidbit that you get before you go ahead. Believe it or not, the number one drink at Wisconsin Supper Club is what you see up there right now. The cor that's not just an old fashioned, it is a Corbell Brandy Old Fashioned Sweet. For those of you who did not know this little fact, 80% uh, of the Corbell Brandy made is uh, consumed in our state. <laughs> that is a fact, that is a fact. Uh, okay, and here's another one. Having one at the bar before dinner is a must. Uh, and uh, my brother-in-law, Kathy's, uh, Kathy's brother, they, uh, he lives in Minneapolis and they opened a Wisconsin supper club about five or 10 minutes from his house in Minneapolis. So he had the reservation. We went there and he was like ready to go right to the table. I said, Murray, what the hell are you doing? And he said, we're, we're, I'm gonna go to the table. I said, you're supposed to have one at the bar before you go. And needless to say, because it was a supper club that was not really a supper club because it was not in Wisconsin, uh, there was nobody else at the bar besides us, you know? <laughs> Anyway, and finally, usually, but not always, usually, but not always, there's a Friday night fish fry and prime rib at the Saturday night, uh, Saturday night special. So we're off on a little adventure. First place, some of you have probably been to the tornado. 
Uh, the uh, thing that's interesting, I would call the tornado a steakhouse, but remember, I'm not the expert. Ron Fayol is the expert. It's in the book. Uh, if you uh, if you, if you like a good steak, Kathy's Kathy's favorite fish fry in the entire world is here on Friday nights, and they brought it back, as I understand it. It's a pan fried perch. Uh, it's like perch that you've never had before. If you like perch, it's uh, as good as it possibly gets. Uh, this is our one of our two favorite restaurants in Madison. The other one is not a separate club. It happens to be Lombardino's on uh, University Avenue, which do a pretty good job with Italian stuff. Number one, number one of all the separate clubs we visited, and we're a little bit prejudicial on this one, is uh, Isnala and Wisconsin Dell. This table that you're looking at is the table that's on the front of the book as well. Uh, it's a table for two that kind of overlooks Placid Mirror Lake. And uh, it's, uh, it's a table that many wedding proposals have been done at, table where many anniversaries are celebrated, uh, and a table that's damn hard to get. Unless you know the owner, and then you say, Bob, Kathy and I are going to be there on Saturday around seven o'clock. Do you think you could arrange it? And he says, yes. I have had many people say, can you do the same thing for me? The answer is no, screw you. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sure my dear wife would say you're not supposed to say things like screw you in a group like this. But I said, screw it. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, the thing that's interesting is I'm talking about this table. Does anybody know Bill Mowbray? He's, uh, he's, in, he's in my club. He's, got, uh, he's an insurance guy. He said, we, had, we sat at that table. I said, you're lying. He said, no, we sat at that table. I said, what time did you get there? He said, three o'clock. <laughs> so if you want the table, get there at three o'clock. If you go to us now, even during the non-season, if you get there at five o'clock, there's a two hour wait. Almost guaranteed, no reservations. Uh, prime ribs, steak and lobster, cash browns. Oh, I mean, kind of a theme that you'll see as we get going. Kathy and I had a condo in Bayfield for many years. And on the way to Bayfield, we'd often stop in Monaco in our favorite restaurant, Monaco, the Norwood Pines. Uh, that's Kathy's drink of choice, the Cosmo you see there. Uh, and during the summer, they have a little porch that you sit on. You sit on the porch, and it, I mean, just beautiful, beautiful atmosphere, and it's the usual menu. Uh, and if you go to the Norwood Pines, don't order an appetizer unless you're starving, because they give you a really nice little dish of stuff. Uh, we, we really, I think we had like a shrimp cocktail or something the first time we were there, and then the dish of stuff comes, we could hardly even eat our dinners because they gave all our stuff to us, right? You'll also notice that Brandy Alexander on the right, uh, also, also a supper club uh, tradition. We walked into the Norwood Pines once upon a time, there's two people at the bar, they both had grasshoppers that were the same as this, and I said, oh my God, how can you eat those grasshoppers after dinner? And they said, this is dinner. <laughs> Anyway, Norwood Pines, the must stop in Monaco. Uh, the Hobnob, has anybody been to the Hobnob? <laughs> this is a, an incredibly special place. In the night, if you go back to a 19, it's between Kenosha and Racine, uh, obviously on Lake Michigan. And uh, the, uh, the thing that's interesting about it, it's like a 1970s decor, like deep red chandeliers, velvet, and I mean, all that kind of, except it is beautiful, it is immaculate, it's not worn down at all, it's incredible. Uh, and uh, if you look back, uh, I talked about Kathy's uh, Cosmo being the drink. That's the pair to draw through. Uh, we we're at the bar overlooking Lake Michigan there. Uh, that's a, a glass of gin. And I've gone back and forth between beef eaters and Bombay Sapphire beef eaters. So we were in Italy for the entire month of May, and they didn't have beef eaters in most places. So now I'm drinking nothing but Bombay Sapphire, usually with an olive, sometimes a twist, sometimes, sometimes. But if you look over on the right, if you look at that down there above the specialties of the house, you see the sea steak. 10 ounce lobster tail and eight ounce tenderloin for 121 bucks. How's that for a deal? And that's kind of how pricey this place is. It's really, it, it's really, we, like in addition to that, our son got married earlier this year. That's where we had our, his, uh, his after wedding kind of a dinner, kind of special place. Uh, I would go back. This is a, a, a kind of a bittersweet one. The Jackson Grill is about a half mile from, from uh, Brewer Stadium. The uh, guy that owned it and the chef earlier this year, uh, it was announced that he had cooked his one millionth steak. One millionth steak. Uh, and a little bit later than that, we found out he died. So right now, we're not sure. His wife was talking about opening, reopening. I'm not exactly sure what the status is. But that's Cajun shrimp that you're looking at. And it was what's called the Lishi Oso, so to speak. We love it. Okay. One of the things about this supper club journey, we also incorporate family in it. We've got a kid that lives in Nina. And uh, there's a place called the Locks Club, which is in Combined Locks. That's L-O-C-K-S, not L-O-X. And uh, so we've got Luke and Mary and their two kids. That's Violet between Kathy and I. And uh, coincidentally, at the Locks Club on Friday night, we got a seven-ounce tenderloin, three deep-fried shrimp for $17.95.
This is 121 bucks at the Hobna. Okay. <laughs> this is kind of a special one. Luke, who's in Nina, uh, sent us a gift certificate to the Wilmot Stage Stop. Uh, it's just north of the border of Illinois and southeastern Wisconsin, fairly close to Lake Geneva. And the, uh, the thing is kind of special. You can see it's 1848. This place has been around for a long, long, long time. Uh, the thing that's interesting about it, it's got one of those old charcoal grills. For those of you that might remember that, uh, Rody's had a, uh, not just the West Washington restaurant. How many remember Rody's on West Washington? I'm just seeing how many people are really old here. Just seeing how many people. But they also opened a restaurant in Middleton that had one of those char those charbroiled grill things. There was another one called the Old Brick Inn on Atwood Avenue. Those are the only two supper clubs in Madison that I remember having those things. Uh, so that's what they do to cook their steaks as well as their lobsters. But if you order a baked potato, be ready for a little extra butter. Is that good or what? <laughs> uh, we were, we were like, we wanted to get a <laughs> we wanted to get a refrigerated doggy bag to take our butter home. <laughs> okay. Wilmot Stage Shop. And by the way, for, for those of you that might be interested, we usually stay at hotels close to these places uh, because we usually have at least one or two, sometimes more. Well, anyway. So we've got another kid that lives in Hudson. His uh, in laws have a place in Hayward. We're in Hayward. We look up the book, what's in Hayward? The ranch. So we get together again. We've got kids and this uh, little guy right here, Abe, he's, he's the oldest of three sons in Hudson. Anytime we say we're going out to eat, he's like, bam, he's on board. He's got two brothers who like to eat frozen pizza. They always stay home. Uh, oh, yes, it's a little cheaper for us, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, again, steak and lobster and the whole darn works. Now you're saying here, sir. Oh, God, this is an important one. Thank you very much. How many have been to the Dorf House? There's a few more hands up there. Now, I would call this a German restaurant. But Ron Fayola says it's a supper club. Remember, he's the expert, not me. Uh, you'll also, does anybody see some familiar faces in that slide? Uh, this is a group that's been getting together for dinner. Uh, it's a closed group. There's no one else welcome, just so you know. Uh, and uh, we get together for dinner about once a month. But since we were at the Dorf House, and even though it's a, a so-called supper club, I did have Wiener Schnitzel, and it was really pretty good, right? Okay, thank you, Kathy, for doing that. Where is it? It's, uh, be, it's, it's 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 in Roxbury, which is between West Madison and Sauk. I don't think they have a sign saying so you got, got to turn off. They're closed on they're closed on Monday and Tuesdays, if I remember correctly. Okay, the ranch. Oh, then we go to this one. Pete's hamburgers is in Prairie du Chien. You're saying what in God's name are you going to Pete? This is about supper clubs. Pete's is kind of a special place. This is only open, I think, Memorial Day through Labor Day in downtown Prairie du Chien. It's a little, a little, it's basically a little shack on the main street. And the way they do their burgers, they, they throw them on, they throw them on the grill and they add water and onions. Like that's burgers, water, and onions. They are juicy, greasy. So when you get your bag, it's not uncommon for the bag to break because it's so ju juicy and greasy. Uh, so there are Kathy and I having lunch after Y Luthing Space Park and everything else having lunch with our, you know, greasy hamburger and everything. But our purpose for going there, in addition to, you know, picking up a piece of hamburger, was actually go to the Angus Supper Club. This was probably the most convenient hotel we had. You, all you had to do is walk across this little sidewalk to get there. So you could have at least one more drink and then stumble conveniently back to your room. This was the second best salad bar that we experienced. Second best salad bar. And again, uh, if you, uh, Look, uh, I think that's a glass of gin that I need another one. Uh, Kathy only only has one. And the other thing that's interesting, I always order a double. I want to fill up the glass. And then I order a second one. They, I said, I just want a single. But I tell you, more than half the time, they fill up the glass a second time and the only thing is for a single. So if you're trying to get a good deal, it's not a bad way to drink. Okay. <laughs> okay. The, the best salad bar in the state of Wisconsin is at the Sky Club. Little note on the Sky Club, it's in Stevens Point, my hometown. This is where we used to go after prom, after homecoming. This is where you would take your date. If you really wanted to like splurge on the date, this is where you would go. Uh, it's also where my, uh, my, both my parents, we had their, after their funerals, we had their celebration of life thing at the, at the Sky Club as well. In this case, we were celebrating with my two sisters and their significant others. And uh, 
if, if nothing else, it's another family kind of a thing. Was there the home of the first ever but, salad bar? First ever salad bar? Is that on the oh, side? and it's, it's the first ever salad bar in the state of Wisconsin. Right now, they're into the third generation of ownership <clears throat> at the Sky Club. For those of you that have seen the NPR thing, the guy that, uh, the brothers that own this, uh, the Sky Club is one of the things that's featured on NPR and the little half hour thing that they do. On the way to Hudson, uh, not uncommon for us to stop in Menominee, uh, so we can go to Jake's. It's about 10 miles outside of uh, Menominee. Jake's, uh, you know, red leather, dark wood. Uh, this was what, prime rib, lobster. It's kind of a theme here, isn't it? Uh, same, same, in fact, you can see there's a little. That's a leg lamp from Christmas Story in the hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure looks like it. <laughs> It is. <laughs> yeah, Jake's is, Jake's is a great place. Oh, again, overlooking the water, really nice little place. Uh, and then uh, we're in uh, Hudson this time. And we say, well, let's see what's close to Hudson. In New Richmond, there's a place called the Laurel. Their claim to fame is there, uh, all these antlers they have on the wall, and they like beers there, I guess. Uh, but again, we're getting together. The thing is, so, so I got the uh, Tucson. There, <laughs> there's the theme. That guy is in every one of these pictures, right? <laughs> And he doesn't order a little thing, you know, he orders like the biggest hunk of meat you can get. Uh, anyway, that little treat before dinner, in this case, you get a hot popover. I mean, and it's, you know how hot, you know, if you make a popovers, it's not necessarily an easy thing to do. So if you get a little hot one uh, from uh, at the Laurel, it's kind of a, kind of a special thing. Uh, <laughs> this goes back to what's for supper club. So Kathy and I are getting our global entry cards in Milwaukee at the place that's fairly close to the airport. So we're in Milwaukee. And it was on a Monday, and the supper clubs that were in the book were all closed on Monday. So we find the packing house, which is right by the airport, and we go in there, and we have, I mean, we have a delicious dinner, uh, probably some of the best escargot I've ever had. So we also have something to do, like, hmm, a lot of escargot, a lot of oysters as well. So I asked the owner, I said, why are you not in the book? You know, the packing says, he said, we serve lunch. Oh, and apparently when this first book was written, one of the criteria was to be a supper club, only so you can only be serving dinner and supper at night. If you serve lunch, you were automatically crossed off the list. As I say that, the rumor for this next book that he's writing is he might be including some of these places like the packing house that also that also serve lunch. Uh, this was our last dinner before COVID hit. This is Valentine's Day, Valentine's weekend, of February 2020, uh, the only thing they had on <laughs> had on the menu was steak and lobster because it was a special thing. Uh, anybody been to the Butterfly Club? It's kind, it's kind of a cool place. It, it reminded me of the, of the Hoffman houses that I used to work at. The bar probably can seat 150, 200 people. Live music, dance floor. I mean, it, it's it, and they, they, I mean, they got everything going for them. Beautiful, beautiful place. So then, it's a, a boy. It's outside of boy. <laughs> okay. So it's about a year later. This is the second best restaurant in the Dells. Kathy said this is the tenderest steak she has ever had in her life. Uh, the Del Bar has been around for a long time as well. Uh, so there's that tender steak, the hash browns, the shrimp, uh, and there's a, the iceberg uh, lettuce wedge. If you're not familiar with it, it's usually with it's usually with French dressing, blue cheese crumbles, and bacon crumbles on top. Uh, it's 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 a way to make iceberg lettuce palatable. The lettuce just happens to be kind of a side thing, you know. Uh, iceberg lettuce sucks. I mean, it really does. <laughs> if you do this to iceberg lettuce, it's, it makes it makes it fairly juicy. Uh, there we are back in uh, the Nina area. This is in Fond du Lac, the sunset uh, overlooking uh, overlooking the water. That little Rudy there is at four years old. Violet six at this point in time, and uh, so there's Violet, I can't remember what she's eating, but look at that fish fry there. Rudy ate that whole frickin' fish, fish fry, four years old. Now, is that a supper club kid in the making or what? You know? <laughs> okay, has anybody been to the stagecoach? I, I, I get together with a group of golfers. We call ourselves the Nomads. We golf on Tuesdays, starting the last Tuesday in April to the first Tuesday in October. Uh, and it's kind of an interesting day. You, you get to the golf course about 10 or 10.30, hit a few balls, play golf uh, all afternoon, have cocktail hour at the golf course, then go to dinner afterwards. It's like from a 10 a.m. to a 10 p.m. thing. So anyway, when we're playing in Janesville, we always go to the stagecoach. This is about halfway between Fort Atkinson and Milton. 
uh, highly, highly recommend this place. You can see it's got the dark woods and everything else. You can see there's a little space in there with one kind of stuff there. But I'm, I'm sure that we didn't have a picture of it, but the way they do their appetizer, they have a little, little uh, metal thing that has four little dishes in it, like seasoned corn, cream peas, uh, and, and all those little do that. Really, really kind of special. If you go there, you also need a reservation. It makes no difference which night of the week you're on because you're going to be awake. Okay, let's see. Oh, oh, this is a, this is this is the third best salad bar in the state, Lake Wissota, Mine Chip Chippewa Falls. Uh, duck in. Guess what their specialty was? Never duck. <laughs> anyway, this is by Delavan. Uh, I had I had duck uh, with a cherry sauce. One of the best ducks I've ever eaten in my life. Sometimes. As a bonus, when you're doing the supper club thing, you get nice sunset pictures as well, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Final one of the slides. Uh, my sister Sue, who's on, on your left, uh, is uh, her husband, uh, Jerry, had a very significant stroke about five, 10 years ago. And for all practical purposes, she's been his caregiver for the last, what, seven or eight years. She sent, me a, she sent out a text probably earlier this year. And she said something like, I just got to get out of here. I got to go somewhere, anywhere. So I talked to Kathy about it. I said, let's look for a supper club by Stevens Point. That's not the Sky Club. And uh, so anyway, I sent her a text back that we would love to take you out to dinner. This is the sister that like hugs me and loves me and everything like that. And so we took her and we took Jane along with us. Uh, and uh, we had actually the whole bar to ourselves. So if you have a whole bar to yourself, you got to have two at the bar instead of yeah. one at the bar. Uh, and uh, there again, there's a little relish tray, and there's that's pretty much my standard in the supper club the uh, tenderloin deep fried shrimp, and always the hash browns, but they did not have hash browns at the pine wood, so I had a set of you know, a separate shrimp. Shop. So there they are saying, Here's to you. Just a couple of uh, final notes. Our favorite supper club in Madison a long time ago was, uh, was uh, the uh, Avenue Bar before they changed hands and everything like that. Right now, when somebody says, is there a good supper club in Madison? I think the Hilltop is the only place that probably meets all of my criteria. I'm not sure what Ron Paola would say. Places we have been, this does not include all of our places, but since then, we've been to the Five O'Clock Steakhouse in Milwaukee, the Palms in Wausau. Where else? Oh, we were just there last Wednesday. Before we went to Cimarroli's, we went to someplace else. And then we had the Cimarroli's in uh, the middle of no place. So, uh, <laughs> so, so if, if, if as, we, as we bring this thing in for a landing, uh, they, uh, we love, we absolutely love to eat. You'll notice some people say, we well, eat the same damn thing every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, if anybody's got a question, I would be happy to respond. Peter. What's uh, the best supper club or where are the best German potato pancakes? Around don't know. You don't know. That's, I think that's more of a. If you go to like a German place, you'll find potato pancakes. You don't uh, find them in many places. Uh, the village that used to be for like 50 years in the South Shore of Lake Delaware had great German potato Okay. Another question sometimes people ask: What about Lazy Susans? Nobody does Lazy Susans anymore. The only place you can get a Lazy Susan is at the old fashioned, but you got to pay like 15, 20 bucks to get the Lazy Susan. So you don't get no freebie Lazy Susans anymore. Yeah. Um, the group of my friends I have is like 10 couples, and we do the winter, fall, spring. It's off the corner. Once a month, we do the summer club, and we go to it. Um, and now we're starting to do some overnight trips last week, and we were in the water. Um, but I would just recommend two. Delaney's is a supper club, yeah. but uh, again, I would consider Delaney's almost more of a steakhouse than a supper club. But that's me. We love Delaney's. Great bar. But if it, the, the 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 thing I like about the Hilltop versus Delaney's, the Hilltop just like kind of feels more like a supper club. I don't know why. It's very it's a very personal kind. Of thing. Yeah. Question. Jake. You ever put uh, the marrow butter on your steak when you go to the Del Bar? No. You gotta order it up next time. 
buck or two extra. You know, they butter and they mix it with bone, bone marrow and it melts on the face. We'll try it. We'll try it. We're open to that. Anyone else? Yeah, Don. Uh, why didn't the Croyal Steakhouse on State Street qualify for your supper club, or was it before your time? Uh, I've actually been there. We're talking about places that are open today now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So when you as long as you work at uh, Paisan, I have all my kids work there. Um, Mine too. But for what, what's worth right now, Portobello does all the Paisan carry out. The same here, they have either Paisan chips, yeah. you know, deer ball, either pizza, or whatever. Yeah. Um, talk to the owner, he's thinking about reopening the basement of the world in the old wine cellar uh, as a pizza pub, and he still has to be looking for a place to go. So, you know, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. They're surviving. Part of all is a great place, but I mean, I just, uh, our family's been going there for. It's yeah. interesting you say that when the original Pisons went under construction on University Avenue, Pisons moved into the basement of Portobello for probably four, yeah. or five, yeah. four, four or five years. I don't know how long, but they were both under the same roof. And then they reopened in that University Square, and then they tore that down and that, and that, and that. People looking for 5,000 square feet in downtown Madison. Yeah, we we heard that. I don't know. It's a rumor or not that the Estrion is the one of the spaces that Paisans was oh, looking for. So, uh, yeah. Who knows? The kitchen in the in the basement wine cellar is real small. That's the, the knock on it. Yeah, that's why they find. We we love the atmosphere on there. Oh yeah, yeah. likewise. Anyone else? Well, thank you very much. Thank oh wait, 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 wait. Two more questions. This is a question. Do you have a comment? Uh, we have a vacation home in Partyville near Portage. And somebody said, well, you got to go to Cimarola. So we went to Cimarola. It's, uh, it is in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. um, but um, so I'm sitting at the bar and you can't hear a thing. But there's no acoustic uh, small blank. And this guy next to me is, I noticed that he was paying $3 for drinks. And I was paying $5. <laughs> and I said, what's the story here? He said, when you come here, it's quantity, not quality. So you order real drinks, you don't you don't all the drinks. But it's and Ron Ron Tim Rowley is still alive that and we'd watch him at the end of the bar, he'd take a puff of a cigarette and stick it in his pocket. And my wife looked at him and said, Did you see this like a cigarette in his pocket? And it was of course the vaping, but this was 20 years ago. And he would stand at the end of the bar and start singing. He was playing the piano when we were there at last night. No, it was not him. It was yeah, we were in uh, Eagle River uh, not too long ago and found this, and, and you probably have it. I, I know I've seen it at the beginning. I don't know if you have it in person, oh, but um, oh, it's for you. Thank you. Oh, okay. I just know what it is. Because, and we don't. Oh, yeah. Have it in person. I'm guessing it's the mayor. Oh, cool. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now, well, send us your recommendations. And if you need any recommendations, uh, you have to get out. Yeah, thanks, Darren. Thanks. Well, again, thank you. Thank you, Terry. And with all our speakers, we make a contribution to Rotary International's End Folio Plus Fund. We'll do that in your name as well. Uh, next week, we have Rob Goose, uh, to be who will be talking about the Rotary Foundation, and he will be here live. He will be back in Wisconsin, not sitting in sunny California. So, um, yeah, there he is, waving on there. Okay. Um, thank you again for being present in person. Wow, this is a huge turnout. I'm glad to see everybody, a lot of people back here. Um, <laughs> we would have run out of samples. We yeah, would have had yeah. didn't know how many people were gonna be here. Um again, have a great week. Um and remember service above self, everybody. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving and don't forget to be at the broad stand <laughs> on Saturday. Thank you, Carol.